Charmaine. This is your great big dreamboat, Andy. How is you, you vision of loveliness? Uh, everything okay for tonight, Charmaine? Uh-oh. Oh, he is, huh? Yeah. Well, I'll call you some other time, Charmaine. Uh, why did she break the date, Andy? Oh, she's going out with another guy. He's going to take her for a ride in his speedboat. She said, I'm too dull. I ain't got no glamour. She said, I'm a footy-duddy. Well, come on, foot. I'm going to lock up the office now and get on home. How can I get me some of that glamour? Andy, it's going to take all night to figure that one out. Well, just give me the dime for the phone call so I can get on home. Well, what's the matter? Don't you trust me? Oh, yeah, Andy, I trust you. But the subway don't trust me. Uh, I'll run you home, King Fish. Come on. Speedboat. I think I don't buy me one of them little sport model cars, and that'll make Charmaine think I was a hot rod guy. Andy, forget about her. There are a lot of other girls will like you just the way you are. Yeah, but who wants to go out with one of them stupid chicks? Look, Andy, take my advice and stay away from the gals altogether. Else you're liable to wind up like me, with a wife to greet you with these ever-loving words. Quote. When are you going to bring home some money? Unquote. Look at these bills. What are we going to do about them? Well, uh, honey, uh, we'll pay this one. Pay it with what? Well, I might get a refund on my income tax. What income tax? You haven't had an income since there was a tax. Oh, I've been that long, huh? George Stevens, I'm laying down the law right now. I went over and saw the manager of the Eagle Arms Apartments today and got you the job as doorman. Doorman? Yes, and you're going to take it. Why, honey, that's a dangerous job. I might get my hand caught in that there revolving door. I hurt my ear drums up blown that whistle for calling the taxi. You're not going to get out of it. We need some money in this house, and it's your job to bring it in. Honey, ain't I always been an adequate uh, provider? No. Well, I was going to answer that question myself. But honey, just give me a couple more days till I get a deal to go in. And... I'm through with your deals. I got you this uniform. And tomorrow morning, you go over to the Eagle Arms Apartments and go to work. And don't you dare come back here unless you have some money. Calhoun, I got to find a way to make some money without taking that job at the Eagle Arms. Well, I wish I could help you, Kingfish, but I don't know what to tell you. Sure is a nice-looking uniform you got, though. It reminds me of one of them Air Co. outfits. Yeah, Air Co. Hey, that reminds me. I met a friend of mine a couple of months ago that was a fly. Ace Judson. I got his card here somewhere. Here it is. Hmm, Ace Judson, flying instructor. Yeah, he got himself a plane and he's giving lessons at $150 a course. And he told me that if I could sell some courses, he'd give me $50 for every course I sold. $50? Why, that's good commission. Yeah. Why don't you try it, Kingfish? With your gift of gab, you ought to be able to sell some of them courses. You might make yourself some money. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could afford a flying course and be a fly boy like old Ace Judson. He got a gal in every airport. He has? Yeah. Why, take off and fly to Chicago and land there and a beautiful gal waiting for him. And he take off and fly to St. Louis and land there with another beautiful gal waiting for him. And then he take off and fly to Salt Lake and zoom right on past the field. Oh, what do you do that for? Uh, that's where his wife lives. <laughs> that old man, them aviators sure lead a glamorous life. Calhoun, just a second. I think you done give me the key to Fort Knox. Dee? And whom you say that these uh, gals really go for these flyers? Oh, that's one of the wonderful hazards of the business. Calhoun, <laughs> I think I got a surefire prospect for one of them courses. The Kingfish, you mean... Well, here it is, Kingfish. Now, what's this business about me glamorizing myself up for... Uh... Kingfish, what is you? Uh, excuse me, Andy, my phone is ringing. I don't hear nothing. Well, Andy, us flyers can hear a thing that you common, uh, 
walking around down to earth, folks. Never here. <laughs> Hello? Ceiling uh, zero over Albuquerque. Visibility 600. Uh, how to win? Oh, north, uh, east by southwest. Well, thank you, Wilco. I'll ride you back later. Beautiful flying with Andy. Kingfish, what that Dolman outfit you got on? Andy, I apologize for your ignorance. But this happened to be the official long dress uniform of the Flying Eagles. <laughs> Do you see that eagle embellishment up there? Well, that's an eagle, huh? Well, that's the first time I ever see one off a laundry truck. Kingfish, you trying to tell me that you was a flyer? That's right, Andy. I was one of the early birds. I flew with the Wright brothers. Well, well, right between them at that first great flight in Chicken Hall. Well, how come you ain't never said nothing about being a flyer before? Oh, well, Andy, uh, you know how them things is. Sooner the pretty girls find out you're a flyer, they're always pesting you to take them up in the plane. And they want to smooch it right up in the clouds. But I am married, man, and flying is strictly a hobby with me. Oh, pretty gal, huh? Yeah, Andy, that's the reason I called you. I remember you saying that you'd like to have some of that glamour on you so you could impress that they are Charmaine gal. Well, Andy, flying is the best way I know for you to do it. Well, I don't know nothing about no flying. Oh, that's too bad, Andy. I'm going to try and get you into our squadron of the Flying Eagles. Hey, when Charmaine see you in this here uniform, uh, that boy with the speedboat got to go down by the poop deck. Well, Andy, I guess I'll be getting on over to the flying field and do a few barrel rolls and loop myself a few loops. That's a real snappy uniform you got there. Oh, I thank you, Andy. Well, uh, the senior leader, Earthbound, uh, smooth flying, happy landing, and all that other aviator stuff. Uh, just a minute. How can I learn how to fly one of them airplanes? Well, now, uh, there's my uh, friend, Ace Judson. He can fix you up with a few lessons. Is it hard to learn? No, Andy. All you got to do is have a good brain, a quick eye, and a strong constitution, and a hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> have you got any of them qualifications? Well, I got the hundred and fifty dollars. Well, anybody with that much money is bound to have a good brain, a quick eye, and a strong constitution. <laughs> do I get the uniform when I graduate? Oh, yeah, Andy. Uh, you get the uniform. I'll take the coat. Well, then, Andy, you can give me a hundred and fifty dollars. Wait a minute, Kingfish. How I know that this flying course is on the level? Well, Andy, because I'm going to take you out to the flying field and turn you over to our chief instructor, Ace Judson. All right. I'll give you the money when I get to the airfield. Uh, look, Andy, I want to give you your first lesson as a flyboy. Now, an aviator is a devil may care glamorous fella, free and easy with his money. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so straighten up and fly right. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Judson. Can I help you? Are uh, you Mr. Judson? No, Judson ain't around. Well, I got a flying student for him. I wanted to give him the money so I could click my commission. You're a little late. Judson left town so he could get away from his creditors. We're holding this plane here for hangar rent. Oh, what are I gonna do? Well, the honest thing to do is just give the student back his money. Yeah, that would be the honest thing to do, but uh, sorry, I can't do that. Well, there might be someone else can give him lessons. Well, I thank you. I thank you very much. Gangfish. Well, Andy, did you call your gal? Yeah, she perked up when I told her I learned to fly and I'm going to take her up in a plane. Well, Andy, uh, uh... Let's get the lesson started. Where's Mr. Judson? Well, Andy, I got some good news for you. What's that? Well, uh, I talked to this fella Judson and when he found out you were a personal friend of mine, he thought you ought to have the best instructor of the whole field. Yeah, that is good news. Uh, who is this best instructor? Hot Shot Stephen. Stephen? That's your name. In the relation? Yeah, Andy, that's me. No, sir. But now, look here, Andy. Oh, there's my license. That's a driving license. Well, Andy, flying a plane and driving a car, about the same thing. Oh, no. If I got to learn from you, I don't want to be no fly boy. Well, look, Andy, I uh, did try on the, the flying eagle off of that cap there. That cap do it. You look like a real gal catching red hot pilot. Yeah. <laughs> Is 
Pinkfish. Can it Brown, when you come in the presence of an instructing officer, are the flying eagles snapped to attention? Well, I ain't snapping at nobody till I get something straight. Well, take two paces forward and state your beef. Pinkfish, I've been thinking about this flying course. How I know you ain't just taking my money and gonna pull some kind of a razzle-dazzle on me. Andy, you are protected by the United States government. I is. How? In this book right here, Andy, the official CAA flying regulation had put out by the United States Department of Commerce. Yeah, it says United States Department of Commerce on there, all right, but what's that CAA? Oh, uh, that's the code of aviating and airplaning. And this is the book that every pilot got to go by when he learning to fly. They do, huh? Yeah, and he, now I ain't gonna put none of my own ideas into this. They're gonna do the whole thing out of the book. Well, that sounds legitimate. Uh, Cadet Brown, attention. Uh, now we're gonna start the flying course. Now the first thing it say here is that the candidate, that's you, yeah. must be physically uh, qualified. So we're gonna give you a few official tests. This ain't gonna hurt, is it? Oh, no, Andy. Now I'm gonna examine your heart. Mmm, <laughs> that's running all right. Yeah. And you know, Andy, every pilot got to have a 20-20 vision. So I'll uh, step right around here and I'm gonna give you a visibility test. Now, Andy, I'll face the blackboard. Now, cover up your left eye. How much is four times five? Mm, Twenty. Now, Andy, uh, cover up your right eye. Now, how much is ten times two? Twenty. Well, Andy, you uh, got a 20-20 vision, all right. <laughs> Sit down here and we give you an equilibrium test. What's this for? Well, let's we'll see if your equilibrium is equal to flying. Andy, we're going to spin you around and centrifugate you. Oh, wait a minute. I oh, know, I guess dizzy. Hmm, well, then uh, we got to find a way without spinning you. Oh, uh, Andy, how uh, do you get dizzy when you play rotation pool? No. Okay, you passed the test. Now, Andy, you're in good physical shape. Uh, so we, now we start with the instructions. Yeah, well, let's start flying. I want that uniform. Uh, what's the next thing we got to do? Well, Andy, I hear what it say. Uh, before a student can qualify for the solo flying permit, he got to have a minimum of eight hours dual instruction. Dual instruction? Yeah. <laughs> On guard. What's this? Well, Andy, I see right here in the book that you got to have dual instruction, so I'm going to instruct you how to do it. What's this got to do with flying? Well, Andy, did you ever see them uh, Army Air Corps uh, officers on the parade? Yeah. Well, they carried swords, didn't they? I guess they did. Well, that showed that they had dual instruction. So, Andy, put up your sword. We got eight hours of this, and let's get flying. Two <laughs> Well, Andy, you are past the dual instruction. Uh, when is we gonna get in the airplane? Well, Andy, you see right here in the book uh, that after eight hours of dual instruction, the candidate is qualified for a solo flying permit. Yeah. Cadet Brown, attention. <laughs> Here's your solo flying permit. Report at 10 a.m. in the morning on the flying line and flying clothes and ready to go. <laughs> Keep a nose up, Andy. Yeah, sure it will up, yeah. Uh, don't look down, Andy. Uh, uh, bank the wings. I'll circle the field and bring her in for a landing. Now drop your gear and flap your flaps. You're coming in too fast. Give it a break. Well, how'd that do, Kingfish? Well, Andy, you bounced a little bit on the landing, but you uh, passed the test. Yeah, but wait a minute. What kind of flying is this? I didn't even get up in the air. Andy, I do just like the book say. It say you got to have so low flying, and you flew so low, you didn't even get off the ground. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kingfish, I gotta talk to you. Uh, disregard any mutual and personal friend of ours? Yeah. Oh, uh, then we better talk outside. Oh, uh, what's the matter, Evans? 
Kingfish, did you tell Andy he was an airplane pilot? Well, I might have conveyed that impression unknowingly, <laughs> but he begged me to teach him some of the rudimentals. That's why I'm not responsible for any illusions of Grandview that he got. No, I don't care nothing about that. But Andy's walking around town in that doorman's uniform, and he says he's going to take that girl Charmaine up in a plane tonight. Why, he'll kill himself that exactly. way. Exactly. That's what'll happen if he gets his hands on a plane. Now, you got him into this, and you got to talk him out of it. Well, I don't know, uh, Amos. I, uh... If anything happens, you're going to get into trouble with the authorities. The authorities? Well, we can't let nothing happen to our old pal Andy. That's right. <laughs> you're strictly a strictly AM flyer, so you better cancel that date with your gal tonight. Well, I can't take her flying in the daytime. She works. Well, I'm sorry, Andy, but the law is the law. Oh, yeah? Kingfish, I done paid you $150 to teach me how to fly a plane. You ain't said nothing about no AM and no PM. Now, either I take Charmaine up in a plane tonight, or I'm gonna get my money back from you, PDQ. Now, Andy, we had brother officers in the Flying Eagles, all for one and one for all. And I, for one, I'm gonna help you. How? Well, Andy, meet me at the airplane hangar tonight at 8 o'clock and tell Charmaine to be there at 8.15 and everything's going to be all right. Well, it better be. Andy, you sure look snappy in that uniform there, son. Oh, I do, huh? Oh, yeah, it's a killer. Meet me tonight at 8. <laughs> Calhoun? Calhoun, you got to help me. Now, listen. Yeah, put it on good and thick there, Calhoun. We don't want him to be able to see nothing through the window. Yeah, I'm putting it on thick, Kingfish. <laughs> well, it's 8 o'clock. Yeah, it is. What you gonna do, Kingfish? Well, Andy, everything gonna be slick as a whistle. Yeah. There you are, Kingfish. I'll finish. All right then, Calhoun. Move all of this stuff out of here, will you please? Andy, you're now all set to take your gal for a flight over the city without ever leaving the ground. Oh, come here, I'll show you. Yeah, Andy, it's uh, very simple. Now, you see, we done blacked out all of the windows. Now, you and your gal sit in here, and all you got to do is run the motor and move the control and make believe you're flying. And me and Calhoun will be hanging on to the tail end of the plane, and you'll never leave the hangar. I don't know, Kingfish. I didn't promise y'all man I'm going to take her flying. Well, Andy, this is the best way to take her flying. And after all, you know you're safe on the ground. And then you can take both hands over the control and use both arms for smooching. Uh, yeah, but what's all this stuff up here? This ain't like a contraption you had back there in the office. Oh, Andy, don't worry about that. All you got to do is turn the wheel and uh, move the control and make it look good. Then, Andy, you can even talk in the radio here. See, like they do in the moving pictures. Yeah, you can call the tower and uh, talk to Roger and give him the will cool and the out and over and all of that stuff. Yeah, I look pretty good doing that. Uh, this, sir? Oh, yeah. Hello, Andy. Uh, Pilot Brown welcomes you to the airplane, Charmaine. Uh, allow me to introduce you up with Brian Eagle Officer Stevens. How do you do that? How do you do? I just love you glamorous aviators. Uh, Pilot Brown, I think you better get into aircraft and uh, take your passenger in there too. Oh yeah, come on, Charmaine. Everything all right, Andy? Oh, yeah. Why are all the windows blacked out? Oh, that called Pilot Brown is strictly a beam flyer. He take off on the beam, fly on the beam, and he land on the beam. Yeah, I was always on the beam. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, press the starter button there, Pilot Brown. Rev it up. The hangar door is open, and you can take right off. Don't you taxi out into the runway? Oh, not Pilot Brown. He take off from a standing start right out of the hangar. Andy, I didn't know you were so daring. Yeah. Fasten the doors, Kingfish. Calhoun, close the pump side. Roger, we'll call, we'll do. 
Uh, come on, get a hold of here. Yes. Well, let's start up. Before he takes off, I better call the tower. Hello, Roger. This is Blind Eagle Brown speaking. Getting ready to take off here. And we'll go to over and out the field. Did you hear what I heard? Yeah. What was that? On the target, southeast runway, Geronimo. Wings on flap, wheels down, tail up. Beam velocity 23. Who is that? This is the tower. Back to the plane is calling. Yeah, I'm getting something. Who are you? Identify yourself. Over. Hello, Roger. This is me and Charmaine. He's taking off right out of the hangar. Talk to you later. How do you figure this? Hello, hello. Back to the plane that's calling. Where are you? Well, we're getting ready to start up. Taking off now, Charmaine. This blind is up. <laughs> but how can you fly when you can't see anything? Oh, it's nothing. I own the beam. <laughs> Approaching runway four, clear for landing. A crazy guy in the little plane is flying right in front of him. Howard airliner, pull up, pull up, look out! What was that noise? It sounded like a big plane. Oh, maybe that's the slipstream slipping a little. I'll fix it that. Why, Mister? What's that crazy fool trying to do? Here he comes. Alert all stations. Unidentified lunatic flying over New York. Alert all stations. How did you learn to do all these stunts? It was real easy. I guess I better check with the tower. How did you ever let him do a thing like uh, that? It was all on my feet. Ah, uh, the thing done slipped out of my hand. It slipped out of his hand and he got away. Come in, Brown. Come in. How about a great big kiss for your fly boy? Oh, Andy. Oh, me. Cut that out. Hey, he's heading out to sea. To sea. Andy, Andy, can you hear me? Uh, this is the kingfish. Hello? Kingfish, how'd you get on this hookup? You're doing a good job like that boy. Andy, I ain't back there no more. I done turned the tail loose. Are you here flying? Flying? Oh, King Bishop. Flying? Give me now a bit of fond farewell to our dear departed lad brother, Pilot Andrew Brown, who flew off into the great horizon to the big landing field in the sky. <laughs> and remember, Andy Brown, uh... Excuse me, Andy. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Kingfish. This is Andy. Andy? What happened? The last time we seen you, you were flying out over the Atlantic. Oh, where is you, Andy? Where is you? This is the London operator. London? Departed four pounds ten shillings for five minutes. <laughs>